Today I'm on the subject of codependent faith, so stay tuned as I give you an example of what this means. Today I'm on the subject of codependent faith, and I've got the example out of Mark chapter 9 today, verses 14 through 29, and you can read the fullness of the story because I'm just going to touch on it because of the sake of time and tell you this. This is an example of a man that brought his little boy to Jesus, and the boy had a serious problem over a long period of years, and it was a spirit that was constantly manifesting and throwing him in the water, throwing him in the fire, trying to kill him, trying to hurt him, and you can imagine the effect this would have upon the father of his child because of the love he had for his son, but you see, has been going on for so long that no matter where he went, no matter how much help he tried to get, nothing ever worked. And I'm telling this father, when he came to Jesus, he first came to the disciples and Jesus wasn't there and the disciples experienced failure in the midst of trying to help this boy. And when Jesus came into the situation, the scribes were questioning the, the disciples and Jesus didn't know what they were saying, but he questioned them saying, what are you saying to my disciples? But you see, the scribes didn't answer Jesus. The father of the child did saying this, I brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. And they started going to go into all the details of what the spirit had been doing to the child. And I brought him to your disciples saying, trying to get him free and he couldn't. And they, or they couldn't. But you see, Jesus said, you're speaking to the whole people as a whole. You're a faithless and loose gospel says perverse generation. You got little, very little ability to trust God. In fact, you got everything twisted around on the inside. You totally misunderstand the ways of, of life that are found in course in Jesus and the ones that come from God's perspective. Instead, they had their own human perspective, interpretation, the way things worked, and they misunderstood and said, bring the boy to me. And as soon as that spirit of that boy saw Jesus, that spirit manifested. And as soon as that spirit manifested, Jesus ignored him and turned and started talking to the Father. Now this speaks volumes about Jesus because you see, as a wise minister, he turned to the Father and he questioned the Father, how long ago is this coming to him? Because you see, when the boy brought the uh, the, the boy to Jesus, the father did, the spirit manifested and the father, all these things came out of his heart. And eventually the father said this to Jesus. He said, if you can do anything, just have compassion on us. The reason to receive from Jesus, the father was making it this reason, how bad the problem was. Just feel sorry, just have compassion on us because look how bad it is. Look what he's trying to do to him. Look how he's throwing him in the fire, throwing him in the water, trying to kill him. But you see, Jesus came back in communication with the father, just like a minister, focusing right back on truth found in God. And the truth was this, if you can have faith, all things are possible in him who can believe. If you can believe, there is nothing impossible is what he was saying. And the father responded out of the unbelief in his heart, not faith, but codependent faith. And the father said this, I'm trying to believe, but have mercy. In other words, he was trying to trust God, but there was so much unbelief in his heart. He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. That's the same thing as saying, Lord, I'm trying to trust you, but deeper than my heart, the problem's more real. This is not a statement of faith. This is a condition of the man's heart, which is a bad condition because Jesus is trying to help the man for the man to change. I'm telling you with the heart in that condition, you're approaching God based on the problem. You're not approaching God based upon Jesus Christ and the cross and the word of God and what God's word says with faith and trust in God according to his word. You haven't even experienced the Holy Spirit to bring change on the inside of your heart to the point that now you really are trusting God. You don't just choose to trust God. You're not, you're not just trying to trust God. No, your heart is the dominant faith is within your heart to the point that you really do trust him. And the problem is lost its ability to dominate. The problem is still there, but the problem's small. The problem isn't big. It's not magnified. No, it's small. And Jesus is now big because you really are trusting him with all of your heart. Having dominant faith is a heart that's opening up to Jesus that really does trust God instead of just trying to trust God. For those that are being blessed by the content of this message, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button.